Morning everyone. Um, I'm just going to cover um, three areas uh, in today's presentation in particular. Um, first of all, a new a new uh, companion to a Fable game, which I think uh, you may have heard is a horse. Secondly, I'm going to talk about our magic system, which we'll get onto in the second half of the presentation. And thirdly, I'm going to cover this, a seat. A connect game that allows you to sit down and relax and chill out, which means core gamers potentially aren't standing up playing core games. It's just ridiculous. So, part of the uh, technology we developed on the Milo project was seat and play. Finally. Finally, yes. So, um, you know, I love connect. I love the fact you can jump around. But you know, if I want to play a, a, a core game, I want to sit down and chill out. So, that's an important. Um, development. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to just do a little bit of backstory before we get going. This is a Kinect game. It's a, a slight sideways look at a Fable experience. There are going to be traditional Fable games forever, I no doubt, but this is going to use the Fable universe. It's going to use some storylines and characters, but we're going to give it uh, a Kinect twist. So all you Fable fans who go, you know, are you going to do this? Is it going to have uh, all this levelling up? Is it going to allow me to marry 14 wives and, and uh, you know, we're not necessarily in this Fable experience focusing on that aspect. This is going to be a, a, a slightly different approach. We're going to go for a story uh, based uh, title with lots of uh, the cool elements that you get within the Albion world. We're going to feature Teresa like never before. I think we all felt that uh, Teresa's story perhaps wasn't developed enough because we've got a great backstory for Teresa. So this is featuring Teresa and you're going to get to find out a lot more about her. We always thought the Spire could do with putting front centre in a Fable game. We've never done that before. And this is, uh, we're going to give you a, an insight to what the Spire is all about as well. So first of all now, I'm going to let Ted just do a simple thing. It's a Kinect game. What can you do on Kinect better? Just do what you think you should do. So give that horse a quite simply. So, you know, we have got over 300 miles of exploration space within this game. We're going to allow you to travel across the length and breadth of Albion. So, you know, if you get out of a horse, it's going to be able to go all over the place. You know, we're going to have tracks uh, going up mountains, through woods. You're going to be able to branch left, right, go back on yourself. Lots of cool uh, ways to navigate around the, the world of Albion. So go a little faster for so I see, sorry, before you do that, you can see he's just simply pulling on those reins, directing the horse in different directions. Now I'm going to slightly stand in front of it on purpose. So I want you to keep looking at this guy here. So it's really important to see the connection you get between uh, using the interface and the screen. Loads of games look like this, but not many allow you to do this kind of simple approach of play. He's doing exactly what you would imagine you would do if you were riding a horse. You don't have to worry about what's the colour button I should be pressing to go right and left. So head tracking simply allows Ted to look around the world at any time. We're going to talk a little bit about collecting in a moment and about what our currency in the game is. The evil, it draws near. You must hurry. Spare nothing to aid our escape. And you can see these glinting little crystals. Enemy attacks. And there's other creatures in the world that allow you to collect something we're calling life force. Now life force is the currency in the world that allows us to power up our magic system. Now for the moment, just stop it, for us, please. Gather what you must, but hurry. The enemy closes with every person. There you go, simply raise your hand and charge up your magic. Now there's a backstory to why uh, we're able to do that. I'm not going to reveal that at E3, but in our next presentations coming up in, our, uh, in the coming months, I'll explain how you're able to do this. So, now you can see, you don't have to keep your arms up all the time. Now there was some feedback that, hey, it's railed. You know, he's putting his arms down. That's completely intentional. I don't want to play a game with my arms in the air. It's a horse. It understands the command you give it. You flick, you flick the reins on its backside, it'll go a little faster. Then you can relax. When you need to turn, you raise your hands. Yeah! Voice commands. Another feature from Milo and Kay. The horse responds to voice input. Get up the hill, Ted. Pay heed to the road, but do not slow. You must keep up the pace. You can fail in this fable. You can die in this fable. The horse can go off the cliff. We are reintroducing fail states to a fable game. Sorry. And that will not help the horse. <laughs> The horse takes damage, you need to care for the horse, you need to look after the horse. 
Sometimes you need to train the horse to do something it wouldn't want to do. This is your horse and it responds to you. More systems taken from Milo. Now, in the distance there, there's a, there's a little branch to the right. That's a different area of the world you could navigate down. This particular part looks like a single track, but the, the world opens up into beaches, you go up multiple routes. This is just particularly a sort of a treacherous mountain pass. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna leave travel behind and navigate in round Albion and gonna go on to the magic. Come across a hot camp. Be wary. There may be more of these creatures nearby. If we spare even a single one, it will alert our pursuers. Now I see Ted's just simply raising his hands and he's playing with these orbs. Now the reason he has these orbs and his ability to play with those and manipulate them depends on how much life force he's collected. The more life force you collect, the more you can level up your magic, the more things you can do with your magic. You can agitate these orbs, you can pull them together and push them, change their behaviour and do different things with them. But for now we're just going to simply fire them into the world. Kill a hop. <laughs> now we put a shield in this guy just to demonstrate here that, you know, these guys aren't just going to put up with being fired at. So we need to do something different with our magic. So, Ted, try and get this guy. Fire, fire, fire behind him and see if you can draw it back. Great. So it becomes a very. Slow down time. Brilliant. Slow down time again. Fantastic. Just using magic in different ways. One handed. You can play one handed, you can play two handed. Two handed is more powerful, but one handed is better because you can keep a beer in the other hand. <laughs> Where's my beer? <laughs> Now, there's too many here to fire with a single shot, so we've got to get all these orbs and push them together, manipulate them, pull them, push them. Go on, Ted, you can do it. And form a different spell. Here it comes. There you go, something a bit meatier. Drag it down. Got him. Missed him. Melee combat. Just slap with magic. Get him. Pull it back. Come on, Teddy. <laughs> now put it all together. This is the mummy hole. Bigger than that, I think. Bigger hands, Ted. Just use a bomb. It's not a life, Ted. That was a boring kill. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, if you get your problems there, never mind. Um, okay, so um, what I'm going to do is just round up a little bit here today. Um, so as you, this is this is purely for Connect. There will be Fable games that use controllers. There will be you know the kind of fair that you guys have enjoyed over the last ten years. But what we want to do with the franchise is just try some other different different things out alongside in parallel. So with the journey, what we're trying to do is just put you in the experience like never before. You know, try and get you in the world. <laughs> We're in first and third person perspective. First person perspective is a, a, a first for a Fable game. We just really want to put you in that world, feel like a hero like never okay. before. Hey! Let's talk about... Yeah, let's talk about some things that didn't work in that demonstration. Um, we have got another form of magic, which is constructive magic. The ability to mold and create things. It's great to sort of fire spells into the world use it as what effectively is a, a, a weapon, but we want to be able to create things with magic and mould things with magic. So we have a number of uh, uh, objects that you can create. You can mould magic, pull it into a sharp uh, spear, put it in your hand and throw it out into the world. 
if you need to defend yourself from um, hogs firing bow and arrows or bolts, you can draw a gesture and turn it into a crystallized shield and use that to defend yourself. Pass a river, draw a fishing rod, cast it and catch some fish. If you want to be mean to your horse, and I don't advise anyone who is mean to the horse, create another spell, turn it into a whip, and you can crack uh, the horse to get it going even faster. So there are many things that we're going to build in the game, using magic as a weapon, also as, as items for you to carry and use. Uh, we want to make it a story-based game, but we want you to allow, allow you as a player to go and enjoy the world and not necessarily develop, move the story on. So it's difficult to say how long the golden path of the game is at this stage. Well, the idea is that, yes, there is a story, but you know we're not rushing you to go and move on through the story, just like in a conventional fable. We we'll allow you to play in the world, to gather, to enjoy the space, to uh, nurture your horse, to interact with the, uh, the experience. But if, you, if somebody wants to sort of rush through the story, there will be a, a definitive time of that story. But as, as yet, we have not actually been able to put a time on that. Um, you know, I just want it to be a, a full AAA. But definitely the areas yeah. we think we're creating a network of, of roads, lanes, full affairs, uh, open spaces that you can move on, like you could do if you own a horse and cart in any kind of townships. So um, where we've got tracks, where we've got open spaces that a horse and cart can go, you can go. So there'll be places where you can go and come back around on yourself. But we, uh, what I haven't spoke about, which you saw a little bit in the trailer there, is um, uh, an entity called the Corruption which is uh, devouring Albion behind you. So there's a point where if you go back, you're gonna die. Uh, <laughs> which isn't good. So, because the game is a road movie to get you, to get the uh, injured Teresa to the spire, um, there is a point where it's better to explore around the front of you, left, right, but there are points you can go back, but eventually you're gonna be going into pretty treacherous uh, space and that could be a fail state. So, uh, yes, you can explore. Uh, but not necessarily as much as you would do in a conventional fable where you can run around all the time. We're, we're, we're pushing you through the game because we really want that narrative and that story to really drive the, the drama along. When you do a, a sneak peek of a title at something like E3, you, you're going up against games that could be in development for years and years, or that this is their final show. Um, we just put it like that so we could show off uh, some of the different combat uh, moves that we're putting together, just to sort of move it through. Um, by no means is that representative of how we're going to move around on foot. So, so um, yeah, don't, don't, don't judge it on that for, for it by any means. Well, the, the, the melee is going to be, um, you're going to be able to create weapons, and unfortunately, I think you noticed there's a bit of a technical problem there with the, probably the lighting conditions, but um, we were unable to sort of show off some of the weapons that you can form just by molding magic and creating gestures and pulling magic into shape. So no, no, no more guns or... So, or so like no that. more conventional muskets or, or swords or, or... We're going to create them out of magic. They, they are the same thing, effectively, as a wrapper, but we are using magic. It's just much more cooler to create your own shape. I mean, the spear could be long, short, just that much magic you want to spend on it. So I, we just thought that was a really cool mechanic. Now, it takes place approximately 50 years after Fable 3, but what we're going to do uh, in the story is move you off the beaten track. You're going to go into the old, unexplored worlds of Albion, and we're going to actually kind of pay homage to the first, second, and third game by taking you into a more mystical, more kind of off the beaten path where technology and advancement hasn't really happened. People still believe in magic and mystery and, and superstitions. So we're going to actually bring back some of the characters and some of the early storylines that we covered in the, the original fables. There are some other forms of travel. There are a couple of regions where we're using other ways to get you around and other forms of no movement using some system within the game, which I can't talk about too much. But yes, there are other ways of moving you around. I'm just not allowed to say what they are at this show. As it stands at the moment, we are looking for a, a, a retail. But I, let, I let the clever guys in the marketing to determine. We just make it and put it in something. I don't mind if it's in a box or a, if it's digital, but um, at the moment it's retail, I believe. Any more questions, guys? Well, thank you all very much for coming along and uh, enjoy your day at E3 today. Thank you very much.